Thanks, Larry. Uh, votes in U.S. elections have been cast by mail since the Civil War, but this year millions of Americans are planning to mail in their ballots for the first time and avoid polling in person, of course, in the midst of this pandemic. The sheer logistics of the challenge puts a lot of pressure on the Postal Service. The agency's Postmaster General, Louis DeJoy, yesterday backed down on plans to cut operating hours and remove postal boxes after accusations the actions would disenfranchise voters. All states allow at least some mail voting, but some have tighter restrictions than others. As of this week, seven states, those are shown here in orange, require an excuse to vote by post, and coronavirus is not considered a good enough excuse. The other states do now accept the virus as an excuse for mailing voting, and in nine of them, officials will automatically mail ballots to every registered voter. The Postal Service expects to handle 80 million ballots over the 11 weeks before November the 3rd. That is double the number that were posted back in 2016, and it is a huge challenge for any Postal Service. Let's speak now to Brandon Finnegan. He's head of elections at Decision Desk HQ, which distributes election night results to media outlets. He joins us from Baltimore. So, Brandon, on the night of November the 3rd, are we going to have a result or will it be delayed because they're still counting some of the pieces of post? I mean, it will really depend on how uh, the what's the end game of this election. If it's a blowout election, odds are um, that we will know by the end of the night, midnight, 1 a.m., once uh, one of the two candidates clears 270 electoral votes. But if it tightens it all from where it is now, things get really hairy because of the delay and the absentee vote count. Uh, a perfect example of this recently was in the state of New York, which had its primary elections, where it took weeks for the absentee ballot count to actually be announced across the state, and 80,000 ballots were simply tossed in the city of New York. So um, that kind of problem can be expected, not necessarily the tossing of ballots, but the delay in count could be expected in any state which really hasn't had this kind of scale of mail-in voting. Uh, places like Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and uh, Michigan, which have had recent primaries, uh, have had varied success in counting their ballots in a short and certain period of time. Pennsylvania, for example, Philadelphia, Montgomery, and Delaware counties, which all vote very heavily Democratic, uh, took days, uh, in the case of Philadelphia, weeks to post all of their returns in. And as you can imagine, because of how divided our country is and how divided even certain swing states are, you could have a scenario where one candidate is leading um, across the state because their counties are recorded, but the other candidate who will eventually win, their votes haven't really posted yet, so it looks like they're behind. Kind of an artifact of so the count. Uh, yes, yesterday, um, Mr. Joy said that he's not going to implement the reforms to the Postal Service that he had been threatening. But he also told Nancy Pelosi uh, today that he's not going to reinstate the post boxes and the sorting machines that have been already taken away. So I just don't see how the Postal Service can handle in the right time frame the amount of mail. I mean, you've got some states where you can apply for a postal ballot 48 hours before election day. That means you can apply for the ballot, you've got to get it back, you've got to fill it in, you've got to send it back, and it's got to be sorted in 48 hours. It, it's not happening, is it? Well, I think there's a bigger, you know, everyone's focused on the Postal Service, but one other concern I would say is the stress that's being put upon local election officials across the United States, county clerk offices and circuit clerk offices, that are going to have to handle this influx of mail, even if everything was perfect with the Postal Service. If you've only been used to counting 1,500 to 2,000 absentees and that vote count jumps to 75,000, you're not going to get through processing for all that the same night of the election, probably not for days on end. And there just hasn't been a lot of adjustments made at the local level, which is where elections are conducted in my country, uh, to account for that. So, Brandon, is there is there a risk then? Because if it's tight and, and if, if certain swing states haven't counted all their ballots, is there a risk that the media puts out a winner and then it changes over the coming days? And should the media in that case be preparing the public? Are you worried that we're not managing expectations at the minute? I feel that there could be a better job by American media to really set the understanding and, and provide context for votes. One thing that we had had for years was percentage of precincts reporting, correct, when you're watching returns here in my country. Well, that's irrelevant now because a majority of vote cast in many states isn't cast in in-person election day precincts. 
It's cast by mail. It's cast at early voting uh, in-person election mm -hmm. centers. So um, there's kind of things that we've been used to, we've been spoiled by, frankly, over the last few decades that simply have gone out the window, particularly with COVID. Right. And I think the, the biggest the biggest thing that's going to be the biggest you're going to have two kinds of uh, two conflicting things for a lot of media. You're going to have the urge for for ratings, the urge for getting the story out first, and then you're going to need to to be really pay heed to the fact that we're just not going to get a lot of these votes in. And I do want to say the leads don't really change. Election night is not a horse race. The horse race is before yeah. the polls have closed. What we see when we see these changes right. in leads, it's just an artifact of the different kinds of votes that are coming in and the different counties that are reporting. And that should be provided yeah. to viewers as well, that kind of context. Really we are certainly going to have to manage those expectations on election night about the result and when it comes in. Uh, Brandon Finnegan, thank you very much for joining us.